we are coming to you live from the Republic Broadcasting Network, where you can handle the truth. Good evening from Boston, Massachusetts. My name is Frank Allen. Tonight, once again, we discuss neuroscience and new human rights issues on TM Radio. Our Sunday newsletter is free, and you can receive a copy by writing frank at targetedmassachusetts.org. Joining Targeted Massachusetts is also free. Just go to targetedmassachusetts.org, and in the navigation, go to Contact Information. Please complete the easy registration form. And if you have any questions, call me anytime in the U.S. at 1-508-857-8334. And please do not overlook the donate button because the more donations we get, the bigger the splash we can make in Washington. Call in to the show live and ask a question at 800-313-9443. Or you can listen at 605-313-0163. Targeted Massachusetts Northeast Conference airs Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern. Access by phone, 515-604-9715. Access code, 708-922. ID, targeted. If you'd like to join us by computer, in your address bar, type freeconferencecall.com forward slash wall forward slash targeted our YouTube channel is targeted Massachusetts the Schumann resonance for today is 13 it should be 7.83 targeted justice is hosting a rally and protest event in our nation's capital this is taking place October the 18th through the 22nd. Registration fee is $35 and includes a free t-shirt. We encourage you to request a five-minute audience with your congressman. You will need to make a request immediately. Make the request through your congressman's website and ask for an appointment on October the 21st or the 22nd. We have a conference call in New York. It's a TI support Saturday evening call, and that's at 8 p.m. Phone access is 605-313-5569. Access code 516-586. And I believe you can type freeconferencecall.com forward slash Janie W by computer. And I can't stress enough, if there is anything else you would like to know about the rally in Washington, please go to Targeted Justice. Dot com. At the top of the home page, you will see TI Protest 2019. Click or tick on that, and that will give you all the information that you need. As I said, we are talking about neuroscience and human rights. Just to recap just a little bit, intellectual property right now means copyright, trademark on books, 
papers, movies, paintings, etc. That's going to change to include the intellect that it came from, the human mind. Secondly, we went over games that use brain-computer interface, and one of them is Emotive and NeuroSky. And these are dangerous because they pre-train your child's brain for what targeted individuals have. And believe me, you don't want it. We also discussed fMRI and what it is comprised of. It's not a, sh- a snapshot, but a video of your brain and the reading of thoughts in real time. This real-time scan is used in stores to suggest to you that you make a different purchase than the one that you had already chosen. And lastly, we had covered human rights violations. Tonight, we are going to discuss neuroscience and the law. Now, neuroscience and law will butt heads and intersect on many levels and on various different issues. This is not surprising while neuroscience studies the brain processes that underlie human behavior. Legal systems are concerned with the regulation of human behavior. It is therefore reasonable to claim that both disciplines are destined to be natural partners. The underlying idea of the new field called neural law is precisely that better knowledge of the brain will lead to better designed laws and fairer legal procedures. Examples of potentially legal relevant applications of neural technology are numerous. Brain imaging techniques. Now these techniques might possibly contribute to more evidence-based decisions in criminal justice from investigation and the assessment of criminal responsibility to punishment, rehabilitation of offenders, and the evaluation of their risk. The tools offered by neuroscience could also potentially play a role in civil law procedures. For example, in the assessment of an individual's capacity to contract or of the severity of the plaintiff's pain in compensations claims. New and more reliable lie detection technologies based on our knowledge of the brain functioning might help to assess the reliability of a witness. So this is getting to the point where you're going to screen witnesses to see if they wet their pants back in the fourth grade. I mean, this is really too much. Memory erasure of violent criminals and of victims of especially traumatic offenses 
An example, sexual abuse. Now, this is also mentioned as another possibility opened by our new knowledge of the brain. A possibly game-changing use of neurotechnology in the legal field has been illustrated. In this study, researchers followed a group of 96 male prisoners at prison release. Scanning them with fMRI, prisoners' brains were scanned during the performance of computer tasks in which they had to make quick decisions and inhibit impulsive reactions. The researchers followed the ex-convicts for four years to see how they behaved. The study results indicate that those individuals showing low activity in a brain region associated with decision-making and action are more likely to commit crimes again within four years of release. According to the study, the risk of recommitting the crime is more than double in individuals showing low activity in that region of the brain than in individuals with high activity in that region. The results suggest a potential neurocognitive biomarker for persistent antisocial behavior. In other words, brain scans can theoretically help determine whether certain convicted persons are at an increased risk of reoffending if released. The Minority Report, which was adapted into a movie in 2002, the plot is about a special police unit, the Pre-Crime Division. Now, they are able to identify and arrest murderers before they commit their crimes, sometimes a minute before they commit their crime. The system is believed to be flawless until an officer from that same unit is mistakenly accused of a future murder. This dystopian scenario, which could result from the new knowledge about the brain, raises important ethical and human rights questions. How much evidence is needed to prove that brain scans are likely to flag only the truly high-risk offenders. In any case, it is clear that much more work is needed to ensure the reliability of the technique before authorizing its use by the courts. as a complementary tool. Other brain technologies that may be relevant for the legal system are lie detectors, mental decoders, and brain printers. And as neurotechnology advances and opens novel opportunities for monitoring and controlling cognitive function, there is uncertainty on how the law should cope with such advancements. In particular, it remains debatable whether emerging trends in neurotechnology call for a revision or even 
a replacement of existing legal concepts at various levels, including civil law, tort law, business law, and legal philosophy. While increasing attention is being devoted in the literature to emerging neurotechnology applications in the context of criminal law or to the increasing use of neuroscience evidence in courts. Little focus has been directed to the implications of advancing neuroscience and neurotechnology for human rights law. This neglected component of the neural law discourse is of particular relevance since the universal nature of the human rights framework could provide a solid foundation for this emerging jurisprudence of the mind. While neurotechnology has the potential to impact human rights, such as privacy, freedom of thought, the right to mental integrity, the freedom from discrimination, the right to a fair trial, or the principle against self-incrimination. Now, this is interesting because you could tell the truth and your brain could tell another story. So who do you believe? The person sitting in the witness chair or the subconscious mind which is always correct? And I mean that that is most true, the subconscious mind is always correct. So you have your mind fighting uh, with the judge and you fighting with the judge. So in short, it does not sound very good at all. Human rights law does not make any explicit reference to neuroscience in contrast to other biomedical developments, which have already been the subject of standard-setting efforts at the domestic and international level. Neurotechnology still largely remains a terra incognita for human rights law. We have to go to commercial. We'll be right back. Folks, we're living in a world the likes of which we've never perceived any clearer than we do now. The plan for global governance has been in the works for generations and would have likely been achieved by now but for the fact that the globalists left open their Achilles heel. With all their tools, Federal Reserve System, fiat currency, no child left behind and then common core education introduced to our schools to dumb us down, vaccines, pharmaceuticals to lobotomize us, GMO foods, insertion of compromised or bought and paid for politicians, judges, mainstream media propaganda, all pieced together like a puzzle designed to ultimately bring the world under submission. But with all their strategy, they forgot one thing, knowledge and knowledge is power. With knowledge, their bombardment is nullified. Folks, with that, as brilliant and knowledgeable as you've become, among the wisest audience of any radio audience in the world, and you are, I want you to take a moment to reflect and ask yourself, how much of that knowledge did I obtain from Republic Broadcasting Network? How high has my consciousness been raised since I've been a listener? How fast am I now able to discriminate truth from fake news by being a Republic Broadcasting listener? How clear am I now able to see the world since I've been listening to RBN? 
Ask yourselves those questions, folks. Then ask yourself, what is that knowledge worth to me? Like my morning coffee, how would I survive without it? A voice of truth and a sea of lies. Do we not all need to make sure it survives? Like public broadcasting, we are now finding we can only survive with listener support. Censorship, advertisers being attacked, truth itself being attacked. It's the only way through this. We at Republic Broadcasting humbly ask you to become a supporter. Look at your budget and make a determination of what Republic Broadcasting is worth to you and what you can afford on a monthly basis. Go to republicbroadcasting.org and pledge 20 30 40 50 if possible, 100 a month or more if it's affordable. Click the Donate button and become a regular monthly donor. Assure both us and yourself that Republic Broadcasting Truth will continue to flow like that morning coffee. The network thanks you. Homeowners, if your lender has gone out of business or sold your transaction to another lender or servicer, you may be the victim of a wrongful foreclosure resulting in the loss of your home. If you've already lost your home, are in foreclosure, or even in good standing, you can challenge the mortgage transaction's illegal issue and your property can be restored to you, and your foreclosure can be stopped or reversed and the mortgage transaction declared unenforceable. State laws, U.S. title codes, the Uniform Commercial Codes, and U.S. Supreme Court rulings have upheld that defective mortgage documentations can reverse or stop foreclosures and enforce property title claims in favor of the homeowner. We are having successes in stopping the process of foreclosure, the enforcement of the foreclosure judgments, the sale of property, and evictions after the sale. We are not attorneys, and we don't give legal advice. We are a professional team of legal researchers, providing forensic mortgage audits and expert witnesses. We have the knowledge to produce the evidence and enforce laws regarding your legal issues. We've been in business for 12 years without a complaint. Consultations are free, and we provide a free title search to confirm if your mortgage has legal defects. Please call 855-253-3748. 855-2, keep it today. Once again, we are coming to you live from the Republic Broadcasting Network, where you can handle the truth. Good evening from Boston, Massachusetts. My name is Frank Allen. In case you've just tuned in, tonight we discuss Part 4 of Neuroscience and New Human Rights Issues. On TM Radio. And I'm going to get right back down to it because I need two hours and I have but one. Okay, humans can adapt to anything. Humans will say yes sometimes to anything. If you get a brand new iPhone... And it's got mind control devices in it, but it's nice and shiny, and you can call all over the world. You're going to say yes. Okay? And we have been saying yes to everything for too long. Yes to 5G. We didn't have a chance on that one. You can't even refuse 5G. To get back to this, the adaptive ability that human rights law has shown in responding to the challenges posed by the genetic technology may help to anticipate how this branch of law could evolve in the coming years in response to new issues raised by neuroscience. Since the end of the 90s, the international community has made significant efforts to address a great variety of issues that result from the increasing access to human genetic data. In 97, the Universal Declaration on the Human Genome and human rights was adopted to prevent that genetic information is so collected and used in ways that are 
incompatible with respect for human rights and to protect the human genome from improper manipulations that lay harm on future generations. The principles contained in this instrument were further developed in 2003 by the International Declaration on Human Genetic Data, which sets out more specific rules for the collection of human biological samples and genetic data. It is interesting to note that from the interaction between genetics and human rights resulted entirely new rights, such as the right not to know one's genetic information, which is formally recognized by the UDHGHR, and the IDHGD, which I aforementioned here, as well as by other international and national regulations. In addition to the recognition of new rights, old rights, such as the right to privacy and the right against discrimination, were specifically adapted to the novel challenges posed by genetics. The close connection between life sciences and human rights was further strengthened by the 2005 Universal Declaration on Bioethics and Human Rights, which comprehensively addresses the linkage between both fields. The latter document sets out principles that are applicable not only to genetics, but to other biomedical and life sciences issues. In this paper, they claim that similarly, to the historical trajectory of the genetic revolution, the ongoing neural revolution will reshape some of our ethical and legal notions. In particular, we argue that the growing sensitivity and availability of neural devices... Okay, folks, and the station You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Talk Right, the conservative app offered by TalkStream Live that caters exclusively to the conservative talk radio community. Here you'll see only talk shows and podcasts from the conservative right, all the big broadcast names and online digital shows in one place. Talk Right makes it easy to find all your favorite conservative talkers with all the upscale features you come to expect from TalkStream Live. Keep up with the fast-paced political world. Download Talk Right today from Google Play or the App Store. Many people write us about their experience with Extendivite. 
Allow me to read you some from Amazon.com. It really does work like the review says it does. I cannot believe that after the first few days, I didn't feel as sluggish or clogged up. It has had a profound impact on my physical, emotional well-being. I'm skeptical as most people about products and their claims, and I never write reviews. But this is a wonderful product, and I recommend it to everyone. Great product. It has brought my blood pressure from the mid-150s over the 80s to the mid-130s over mid-80s. Along with diet and exercise in just the past couple of months. Excellent. Thank you, David. Tell us your story. Get Extendivite today. Call 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendivite. Corporate media dominates the American opinion. Finding independent voices that counter this avalanche is becoming increasingly difficult. With the endless corruption running rampant throughout our government, independent voices are needed more than ever to battle the offensive against our freedoms and liberties. As a listener of RBN, no one understands this concept better than you. Now it's up to you to do your part. The time has come for you to take action and begin broadcasting the truth to hundreds or thousands of people every month. Sound impossible? Quite the contrary. With pointed slogans from LibertyStickers.com, you can reach countless sleeping Americans unaware that they live in a real-life wonderland. LibertyStickers.com has a huge inventory of political bumper stickers and messages that reflect the truth about our government, our politicians, and the future of America. With so many in stock, there's one perfect for you. Visit us today at LibertyStickers.com. Again, that's LibertyStickers.com. Do your part. Your voice is important. Let it be heard. Good evening from Boston, Massachusetts. My name is Frank Allen. In case you've just tuned in, tonight we are discussing neuroscience and new human rights issues on TM Radio. And since our time is very, very limited, love to have another hour. Um... I'm going to get right down to it. The availability we have seen of neuro devices will require in the coming years the emergence of new rights or at least the further development of traditional rights in our Constitution specifically, to address the challenges posed by neuroscience and neurotechnology. The arguments are going on all over the the world today about human rights and this new technology. The argument is in accordance with the observation of how human rights have historically emerged and developed in modern societies. We don't want to end up like China. China will soon be governed by AI. The writing is on the wall. Human rights, in fact, have always arisen as specific responses to recurrent threats to fundamental human interests, to human dignity, or to what is required by a minimally good life. 
as we attempt to show the individual quest to exert control over one's own neurocognitive dimension, as well as the emergence of potential threats to basic human goods or interests posed by the misuse or inadequate application of neurotechnological devices may require reconceptualization of some traditional human rights or even the creation of new neurospecific rights. This goes beyond the scope of this discussion. It goes to the different theories about the foundations of human rights or to take a position in this regard for the purposes of our investigation. We choose to adopt a broad practical conception of human rights who argues that they are requirements whose object is to protect urgent individual interests against predictable dangers to which they are vulnerable under typical circumstances of life in a modern world composed of states. In general terms, it can be said that the scope of human rights is to guarantee both the necessary negative and positive prerequisites for leading a minimally good life. A common objection against the recognition of new rights is that it leads to the so-called rights inflation which is the objectionable tendency to label everything that is morally desirable as a human right. The unjustified proliferation of new rights is indeed problematic because it spreads skepticism about all human rights. As if they were merely wishful thinking or purely rhetorical claims. Rights inflation is to be avoided because it dilutes the core idea of human rights and distracts from the central goal of human rights instruments which is to protect a set of truly fundamental human interests and not everything that would be desirable or advantageous is an ideal world. Human rights should be made as they were in the beginning. The Ten Amendments of the Constitution, everyone can understand. We do not need new rights that are a Nancy Pelosi book that's two feet thick that you have to uh, sign into law, then you can read it. Those were her words. Uh, Human rights have to be kept simple so that everyone can understand what they say. Not everyone is a PhD. Not everyone 
has gone to college. Not everyone has gone to school at all. But they learned how to read. A frequently accepted way to avoid rights inflation is to impose just a factory tests for specific human rights. For example, it could be required that a proposed human right should not only deal with some very important good, but also respond to a common and serious threat to that good. It should impose burdens on the addressees that are justifiable and no larger than necessary and be feasible in most of the world's countries. The international law has suggested a list of criteria that a given claim must satisfy in order to qualify as a human right in terms of of international law. Now, when you take, or not you, when a thief or a crook takes out a gun and shoots somebody in a local store, if there is a witness he is identified and immediately brought in. If there is no witness, forensic data or cameras will bring him in. But if you are a targeted individual, nothing is done. Nothing at all. This is what we strive to change. These laws must change and focus around intellectual property. What is inside of the skull is yours to keep. Human rights must reflect a fundamentally important social value, be consistent, but not merely repetitive, of the existing body of international human rights law. They must be capable of achieving a very high degree of international consensus and be sufficiently precise as to give rise to identifiable rights and obligations. Our rights in the United States of America, our Constitution, it may as well rather than be in a protected vault, it is treated as though it were on the floor covered with footprints being used by a painter. This is ridiculous. It's time for the people to stand up. It's time to stop caring just about your job Take a month off from work and protest. Somebody's got to do it, and if we don't do it pretty soon, there will be nothing to protest against. Neurospecific human rights is consistent with Glenn Beor's advocacy of a jurisprudence of the mind that takes account of the latest understandings of the brain and which situates 
these within our country's tradition of embracing individual self-determination and limited government. As brain technology is rapidly reshaping the infosphere and the digital infrastructures in our societies, there is an urgent need to proactively assess whether our current ethical and legal frameworks are ready to face this emerging scenario. Let me tell you, we are not ready at all. And this technology is just surfacing to the public. The millions of targeted individuals have seen it already. And we see it every day. At this stage, it is worth noting that many of the issues discussed are not unique to cutting-edge neurotechnology, but have precedence in more traditional interventions. For example, breaches for mental privacy emerged before the invention of neuroimaging and neuromonitoring techniques through more rudimental techniques such as interrogation and polygraph-based lie detection. Why not let the FBI do their job? They are fantastic at it. Let them do their forensics. Let them handle the job. Stay out of people's heads. These interventions do not target neural processing directly, but only via proxy processes, such as speech, behavior, and psychological indices. In example, pulse and skin conductivity. In addition, the degree of accuracy and resolution of such techniques is remarkably low, hence often insufficient to support justified inferences about mental information. Similarly, threats to mental integrity and psychological continuity were posed by non computational interventions such as psychoactive drugs and hypnotic inductions. Very good word. Hypnotic. It's part of what we deal with every day. I just had to stop on it because hypnotic inductions it's part of the way they tried to control the targeted community. So these inductions were around way before the invention of neurostimulation and brain machine interfacing. However, these techniques are often characterized. Okay, folks, once again, we have to go to commercial.
Tired of being lied to by mass media? It's growing more and more apparent today that news is received less and less through standard media outlets. Even with a growing audience every day, RBN is beginning to direct more efforts into social media. Social media and the use of the Internet is fast becoming the primary source of people for news, regardless of demographic. RBN has set out to provide some of the best news on the Internet through republicbroadcasting.org and also has begun to use the tools to our advantage by way of social media. Republic Broadcasting is now operating a Facebook page to function as yet another avenue to have our collective voice reach new audiences across not only America, but across the globe as well. The Facebook page features not only news, but also an RBN player to listen to our broadcast. Get involved by visiting facebook.com slash Republic Broadcasting and liking our page and share it with your friends and family because you can handle the truth. Homeowners, are you in foreclosure, expecting to be served with a foreclosure lawsuit, or suspect your lender has coerced you into an illegal mortgage transaction? A huge number of mortgages made in the last 10 years have legal issues and are possibly defective. State laws and the U.S. Supreme Court have upheld that defective mortgage documents are grounds for foreclosure defense and for counterclaims in favor of the homeowner. If your mortgage has been sold or assigned since closing the loan, it may be defective and you may be paying the wrong party and the lender may not have standing or the right to foreclose or collect payments under the law. If you would like to know if your mortgage is legal or not or know if you are paying the right party, we can help. Our initial consultations are free of charge. We are not attorneys. We are legal researchers and work closely with experienced lawyers who know how to help you find the evidence to help you keep your home. Call toll-free 1-855-2-KEEP-IT. That's 1-855, the number 2, keep it today. Many people tell us about their experience with Extendivite. Just listen to what Glenn has to say. Prior to taking it, I had diabetic neuropathy. The Extendivite reduced that significantly. Acid reflux was reduced. I had athlete's foot, very severe. Trimmed that down to about 75% dandruff. Almost completely gone. I had a a simple neuralgia at the base of my skull. I was having migraines reduced by about 90%. Heart palpitations, my heart would kind of stall out. I would skip a beat. Very uncomfortable. And when walking from downstairs going to sleep, by the time I got to the bedroom, which is just one flight of stairs, my heart was pounding coming out of my chest. My vision was blurry. This completely solved that problem. Great product. Thanks. Tell us your story. Get Extendivite today. Call 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendivite. Live from the Public Broadcasting Network, where you can handle the truth. Good evening from Boston, Massachusetts. My name is Frank Allen. Tonight, we have been discussing neuroscience and new human rights issues on TM Radio. Unfortunately, our time is running out. So I'm just going to run down my list here. Our Sunday newsletter is free, and you can receive a copy by writing frank at targetedmassachusetts.org. Joining Targeted Massachusetts is also free. Just go to targetedmassachusetts.org, and in the navigation, go to Contact Information. Please complete the easy registration form. If you have any questions, call me anytime in the U.S. at 1-508-857-8334. Call in to the show live and ask a question at 800-313-9443. Or you can just listen at 605 313 
0163. Targeted Massachusetts Northeast Conference airs Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern. Access by phone 515-604-9715. Access code 708-922-ID. Targeted. If you'd like to access our show by computer, in your address bar, type freeconferencecall.com forward slash wall forward slash targeted. Our YouTube channel is Targeted Massachusetts. Targeted Justice is hosting a rally and protest event in our nation's capital. This is taking place October the 18th through the 22nd. Registration fee is $35 and includes a free t-shirt. We encourage you to request a five-minute audience with your congressman. You will need to make a request several weeks in advance. Make the request through your congressman's website and ask for an appointment on October the 21st or the 22nd. Okay, I think we're probably just about out of time. But we're going to keep hitting this human rights issue until we're done with it. God bless. Good night from Boston, Massachusetts. My name is Frank Hamm. Corporate media dominates the American opinion. Finding independent voices that counter this avalanche is becoming increasingly difficult. With the endless corruption running rampant throughout our government, independent voices are needed more than ever to battle the offensive against our freedoms and liberties. As a listener of RBN, no one understands this concept better than you. Now it's up to you to do your part. The time has come for you to take action and begin broadcasting the truth to hundreds or thousands of people every month. Sound impossible? Quite the contrary. With pointed slogans from LibertyStickers.com, you can reach countless sleeping Americans unaware that they live in a real-life wonderland. LibertyStickers.com has a huge inventory of political bumper stickers and messages that reflect the truth about our government, our politicians, and the future of America. With so many in stock, there's one perfect for you. Visit us today at LibertyStickers.com. Again, that's LibertyStickers.com. Do your part. Your voice is important. Let it be heard. This is RBN, the Republic Broadcasting Network.